chemical bonding and crystal structures. Objective Chemistry of the crystals is best understood by studying the nature of chemical bonding. Understanding of the crystal structures of some crystalline solids need the study of principles of ionic bonding. Chemical bonding produces typical crystal structures. They are called type structures. They serve as the basis from which more complex structures can be derived. Hence, the main objective of this topic is to make the students understand the phenomenon of chemical bonding, types of bonding, and classification of crystal structure. Introduction The nature of chemical bonding speaks about the chemistry of the crystals. The chemical bond is the result of the attraction between the two or more atoms of the chemical substances. Combining of two or more atoms produces a chemical compound. A stable compound occurs when the total energy of the combination has lower energy than the separated atoms. Now, let us discuss how these atoms and molecules hold together. Atoms and molecules of the substances are held together by bonds. There are different kinds of bonds. The type of bond seen in elements and compounds depends on the chemical properties as well as the attractive forces governing the atoms and molecules. The types of chemical bonds are ionic bond, covalent bond, metallic bond, van der Waals bond, and hydrogen bond. Electron properties. In order to understand bonds, one must be familiar with electron properties, including valence shell electrons. The outermost layer or shell of an electron represents the valence shell of an atom. Though today scientists generally agree that electrons do not rotate around the nucleus, it was thought throughout history that each electron orbited the nucleus of an atom in a separate layer or shell. Today, scientists have concluded that electrons hover in specific areas of the atom and do not form orbits. However, the valence shell is still used to describe electron availability. The octet and duet rules. In bonding, everything is based on how many electrons an element has or shares with its compound partner or partners. The octet rule is followed by most elements, and it says that to be stable, an atom needs to have eight electrons in its outermost shell. Elements that do not follow the octet rule are H, hydrogen, He, helium, B, Li, and Be, sometimes. Lithium gives up an electron, whereas the other elements listed here gain one. These elements instead follow the duet rule, which says that the atoms only need two valence electrons to be stable. When bonding, stability is always considered and preferred. Therefore, atoms bond in order to become more stable than they already are. Not all atoms bond the same way, so we need to learn the different types of bonds that atoms can form. Types of chemical bonds. There are five types of chemical bonds that are recognized. They are ionic, covalent, metallic, van der Waals, and hydrogen bonds. Ionic bonding. Atoms with large difference in electronegativity results in ionic bond. Electronegativity is the quantitative representation of an atom's ability to attract an electron to itself. The electronegativity of atoms of value 1.7 and above qualifies a bond to be ionic. Ionic bonds often occur between metals and salts. Chloride is often the bonding salt. 
compounds displaying ionic bonds form ionic crystals in which ions of positive and negative charges hover near each other but there is not always a direct one to one correlation between positive and negative ions ionic bonds can typically be broken through hydrogenation or the addition of water to a compound essentially complete electron transfer from an element of low ionization energy metal to an element of high affinity for electrons non metal happens in cases like this 2na plus cl2 equals 2na plus plus 2cl minus therefore ionic compounds exist primarily between metals at left of periodic table groups 1a and 2a and transition metals and non metals at right o and halogens covalent bonding covalent bonds are formed when there is small difference in the nearly insignificant electronegativity values of two atoms the value of difference in electronegativity between two atoms in a covalent bond is less than 1.7 covalent bonds often form between similar atoms non metal to non metal or metal to metal complete sharing of electrons occurs in covalent bond there is usually a direct correlation between positive and negative ions meaning that because they share electrons the atoms balance covalent bonds are usually strong because of this direct bonding the bond arises from the mutual attraction of two nuclei for the same electrons electron sharing results comparison of properties of ionic and covalent compounds because of the nature of ionic and covalent bonds the materials produced by those bonds tend to have quite different macroscopic properties the atoms of covalent materials are bound tightly to each other in stable molecules but those molecules are generally not very strongly attracted to other molecules in the material on the other hand the atoms ions in ionic materials show strong attractions to other ions in their vicinity this generally leads to low melting points for covalent solids and high melting points for ionic solids for example the molecule carbon tetrachloride is a nonpolar covalent molecule ccl4 carbon tetrachloride its melting point is minus 23 degrees centigrade by contrast the ionic solid nacl has a melting point of 800 degrees centigrade ionic compounds ionic compounds show the following characteristics they belong to crystalline solids made of ions these show high melting and boiling points they conduct electricity when melted they are soluble in water but not in nonpolar liquid covalent compounds covalent compounds show the following characteristics they belong to various gases liquids or solids made of molecules they show low melting and boiling points they are poor electrical conductors in all phases many of the compounds are soluble in nonpolar liquids but not in water metallic bonding alkali reactive force that is the reaction between molecules within metals produces metallic bond lattice of positive ions shares the sea of dispersed electrons these electrons act as a gum and this gives the substance a definite structure the high melting and boiling point in metals are attributed to the strong attractive force between the electrons and the positive ions the principle is similar to that of ionic bonds the physical properties of metals such as strength malleability ductility luster conduction of heat and electricity are all due to metallic bonds present in them electrons move freely in metals independent of the positive charge and thus metal gains 
some electrical conductivity. It allows the energy to pass quickly through the electrons generating a current. Heat conduction works on the same principle. In metallic bonded substances, the transfer of energy is faster due to free electrons than the substances which are covalently bonded. The nonmetals like graphite are good conductors of electricity. The reason is, like some other metals, they have free electrons and the conduction of electricity is more in aqueous ionic compounds and molten material as they contain free moving ions. Strength of the bond. In metals, high energy is required to dissociate the strong attractive force between the atoms of the metal. Therefore, metals often have high boiling points with tungsten 5828 Kelvin being extremely high. A remarkable exception are the elements of the zinc group, Zn zinc, Cd cadmium and Hg mercury. The electron configuration resemble a noble gas configuration like that of helium more and more when going down in the periodic table because the energy distance to the empty NP orbitals becomes larger. These metals are therefore relatively volatile and are avoided in ultra-high vacuum systems. Otherwise, metallic bonding can be very strong even in molten metals such as gallium. Even though gallium will melt from the heat of one's hand just above room temperature, its boiling point is not far from that of copper. Molten gallium is therefore a very non-volatile liquid thanks to its strong metallic bonding. Given the high cooling rates and appropriate alloy composition, the metallic bonding can occur even in glasses with an amorphous structure. Solubility and compound formation. Water and organic solvents cannot dissolve metals unless a reaction takes place in them. Typically, this is an oxidation reaction that takes the metal atoms of their itinerant electrons destroying the metallic bonding. However, metals are often readily soluble in each other while retaining the metallic character of their bonding. Gold, for example, dissolves easily in mercury, even at room temperature. Even in solid metals, the solubility can be extensive. If the structures of the two metals are the same, there can even be complete solid solubility as in the case of electrum, the alloys of silver and gold. At times, however, two metals will form alloys with different structures than either of the two parents. One could call these materials as metal compounds, but because materials with metallic bonding are typically not molecular, Dalton's law of integral proportions is not valid, and often a range of stoichiometric ratios can be achieved. It is better to abandon such concepts as pure substance or solute. The study of such phases has traditionally been more the domain of metallurgy than of chemistry, although the two fields overlap considerably. Optical properties. Light is the physical cause of sensation of sight. It consists of a combination of an electrical and a magnetic field. In metallic bonding, electrons are excited by the electrical field. The result is that photons are not able to penetrate very far into the metal and are typically reflected. They bounce off, although some may also be absorbed. This holds equally for all photons of the visible spectrum, which is why metals are often silvery white or grayish 
with the characteristic specular reflection of metallic luster. The balance between reflection and absorption determines how white or how grey they are, although surface tarnish can obscure such observations. Silver, a very good metal with high conductivity, is one of the whitest. Notable exceptions are reddish copper and yellowish gold. The reason for their color is that there is an upper limit to the frequency of the light that metallic electrons can readily respond to, the plasmon frequency. At the plasmon frequency, the frequency dependent dielectric function of the free electron gas goes from negative reflecting to positive transmitting. Higher frequency photons are not reflected at the surface and do not contribute to the color of the metal. There are some materials like indium tin oxide, ITO, that are metallic conductors, actually degenerate semiconductors, for which this threshold is in the infrared, which is why they are transparent in the visible but good mirrors in the IR, infrared. For silver, the limiting frequency is in the far ultraviolet, but for copper and gold, it is closer to the visible. This explains the colors of these two metals. At the surface of a metal, resonance effects known as surface plasmons can result. Surface plasmon resonance, SPR, is the collective oscillation of electrons in a solid or liquid stimulated by incident light. The resonance condition is established when the frequency of light photons matches the natural frequency of surface electrons, oscillating against the restoring force of positive nuclei. SPR in nanometer sized structures is called localized surface plasmon resonance. They are collective oscillations of the conduction electrons like a ripple in the electronic ocean. However, even if photons have enough energy, they usually do not have enough momentum to set the ripple in motion. Therefore, plasmons are hard to excite on a bulk metal. This is why gold and copper still look like lustrous metals, albeit with a dash of color. However, in colloidal gold, the metallic bonding is confined to a tiny metallic particle, preventing the oscillation wave of the plasmon from running away. The momentum selection rule is therefore broken and the plasmon resonance causes an extremely intense absorption in the green with the resulting beautiful purple-red color. Such colors are of orders of magnitude more intense than ordinary absorptions seen in dyes and the like that involve individual electrons and their energy states. Van der Waals bonding Electrostatic forces control the attraction of the water molecules in liquid water and these forces have been described as van der Waals forces or van der Waals bonds. Even though the water molecule as a whole is electrically neutral, the distribution of charge in the molecule is not symmetrical and leads to a dipole moment, a microscopic separation of the positive and negative charge centers. This leads to a net attraction between such polar molecules which finds expression in the cohesion of water molecules and contributes to viscosity and surface tension. Perhaps it is fair to say that Van der Waals forces are what holds water in the liquid state until thermal agitation becomes violent enough to break those Van der Waals bonds at 100 degrees centigrade. With cooling, residual electrostatic forces between molecules cause most substances to liquefy and eventually solidify, with the exception of helium, which never becomes a solid at atmospheric pressure. Even non-polar molecules experience some Van der Waals bonding, which can be attributed to their being polarizable. Even though the molecules don't have permanent dipole moments, they can have instantaneous dipole moments which change or oscillate with time. These fluctuations of molecular dipole moments lead to a net attraction between molecules which allow nonpolar substances 
like carbon tetrachloride to form liquids. Examination of the dipole electric field shows that the electric field from one instantaneous dipole will tend to polarize a neighboring molecule such that it will be attracted, sort of the electrical analog to a bar magnet magnetizing a paper clip so that it will be attracted to the magnet. This happens regardless of which pole of the magnet is brought close to the paper clip. The weaker van der Waals forces in nonpolar liquids may be manifested in low surface tension and low boiling points. Hydrogen bonding The intermolecular force creates hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding differs from other types of bond since it is a force of attraction between a hydrogen atom in one molecule and a small atom of high electronegativity in another molecule. That is, it is an intermolecular force, not an intramolecular force as in the common use of the word bond. When hydrogen atoms are joined in a polar covalent bond with a small atom of high electronegativity such as O, F or N, the partial positive charge on the hydrogen is highly concentrated because of its small size. If the hydrogen is close to another oxygen, fluorine or nitrogen in another molecule, then there is a force of attraction termed a dipole-dipole interaction. This attraction or hydrogen bond can have about 5% to 10% of the strength of a covalent bond. Hydrogen bonding has a very important effect on the properties of water and ice. Hydrogen bonding is also very important in proteins and nucleic acids and therefore in life processes. The unzipping of DNA is the breaking of hydrogen bonds which help hold the two strands of the double helix together. Hydrogen bonds only form between hydrogen and oxygen, O, nitrogen N or fluorine F. Hydrogen bonds are very specific and lead to certain molecules having special properties due to these types of bonds. Hydrogen bonding sometimes results in the element that is not hydrogen, oxygen for example, having a lone pair of electrons on the atom making it polar. Lone pairs of electrons are non-bonding electrons that sit in pairs on the central atom of the compound. Water, for example, exhibits hydrogen bonding and polarity as a result of the bonding. Because of this polarity, the oxygen end of the molecule would repel negative atoms like itself, while attracting positive atoms like hydrogen. Hydrogen, which becomes slightly positive, would repel positive atoms like other hydrogen atoms and attract negative atoms such as oxygen atoms. This positive and negative attraction system helps water molecules stick together, which is what makes the boiling point of water high, as it takes more energy to break these bonds between water molecules. Crystal Structures The crystal structures of some crystalline solids can be understood by the principles of close packing. They are called type structures because they serve as the basis from which more complex structures can be derived. The type structures are classified on the basis of ratio of the constituents A and X of the crystals. AX type crystal structures. In AX type structures, A denotes the cation and X the anion. There are several different crystal structures for AX compounds. Each is normally named after a common material that assumes the particular structure. Under this type, we will discuss the structures of rock salt, NaCl, CSCl, cesium chloride, sphalerite and wurtzite, both being polymorphs of zinc sulfide and nicolite, NiAs. Rock salt structure. Perhaps the most common AX crystal structure is the sodium chloride, NaCl, or rock salt type. The coordination number for both cations and anions is 6, and therefore, the
the cation anion radius ratio is between approximately 0 0.414 and 0 0.732. A unit cell for this crystal structure is generated from a face centered cubic arrangement of anions with one cation situated at the cube center and one at the center of each of the 12 cube edges. An equivalent crystal structure results from a face centered cubic FCC arrangement of cations. Thus, the rock salt crystal structure may be thought of as two interpenetrating FCC lattices, one composed of the cations, the other of anions. Some of the common materials that form with this crystal structure are NaCl sodium chloride, MgO magnesium oxide, MnS manganese sulfite, LiF lithium fluoride and FeO iron oxide. Cesium chloride structure. In the unit cell of the cesium chloride CSCL crystal structure, the coordination number is 8 for both ion types. The anions are located at each of the corners of a cube, whereas the cube center is a single cation. Interchange of anions with cations and vice versa produces the same crystal structure. This is not a body centered cubic BCC crystal structure because ions of two different kinds are involved. Sphalerite zinc blend structure. In this structure, the sulfur atoms from the FCC lattice and alternate tetrahedral voids are filled with Zn zinc. Thus, each zinc atom is surrounded by four zinc atoms. There are four sulfur atoms in the uniot cell together with four zinc atoms. The zinc sulfur ratio is therefore 1 is to 1, which is in agreement with the composition ZnS. In fact, it can be shown that the zinc atoms in sphalerite structure separately form a FCC lattice if we connect the zinc atoms from adjoining unit cell. Therefore, the sphalerite structure can be called an interpenetration of two FCC lattices of S and Zn. Since both these lattices are parts of sphalerite structure, they are called sublattices. That is, sphalerite consists of zinc sublattice with FCC arrangement and S sublattice again with FCC arrangement. All corner and face positions of the cubic cell are occupied by S atoms while the Zn atoms fill interior tetrahedral positions. An equivalent structure results if zinc and S atom positions are reversed. Thus, each zinc atom is bonded to four S atoms and vice versa. Most often, the atomic bonding is highly covalent in compounds exhibiting this crystal structure, which include ZnS zinc sulfide, ZnT zinc telluride, and SiC silicon carbide. If both sublattice of spalarite structures are occupied by the same kind of atoms, the resulting structure will be comparable to that of a diamond. The difference is that all the tetrahedral positions are occupied by carbon atoms, that is, Ra divided by Rx equals Ra divided by Ra equals 1. Here, X and A have no difference. Indeed, this structure can be considered to be made up of corner sharing tetrahedra wherein each carbon atom is surrounded by four carbon atoms. The four atoms at the corners do not form part of four tetrahedral but are related to those in other tetrahedra because of the so called diamond glide. Hence the space group of the distorted lattice is FD3M as against F43M of sphalerite. A large number of elements or compounds adopt the diamond structure of which the well-known ones are silicon and germanium, the elemental semiconductors. Wurzite structure. This is another polymorphic form, compound having different crystal structure but the same chemical composition of ZNS. The wurzite structure consists of hexagonally closed packed sulfur atoms wherein the alternative tetrahedral voids 
are filled by the zinc atoms. Each sulfur atom is surrounded by four zinc atoms. In turn, each zinc atom is surrounded by four sulfur atoms. Thus, wurtzite can be shown to consist of two interpenetrating HCP sublattices of S and Zn atoms. The difference between the wurtzite and sphalerite structure is in the localized arrangement. This can be shown to arise from the difference in the orientation of the neighboring tetrahedral. In wurtzite, the corners of two adjacent tetrahedra are oriented in the same direction, while in sphalerite, they are oriented in opposite direction. A large number of compounds possess the same crystal structure as that of sphalerite, COCl, copper chloride, COBr, copper bromide, ZnS, zinc sulfide, CdS, cadmium sulfide, etc. Such crystals are said to be isostructural. Similarly, compounds such as BeO, beryllium oxide, ZnO, zinc oxide, CdS, cadmium sulfide, etc. are isostructural with wurtzite. Nicolite structure. The nicolite structure is made up of hexagonal close packing of arsenic AS atoms in which all octahedral voids are occupied by nickel atom. Here, the arsenic atoms octahedrally surround each nickel atom. However, the converse is not true because six nickel Ni atoms are centered on the corners of a trigonal prism at the center of which the arsenic atom is located. It can be seen that the AS atom does not sit midway between any two Ni atoms and that the metal atom can have direct interactions. Therefore, crystals possessing this structure are better conductors of electricity. For example, FES, iron sulfide or pyrrhotite, NIS, nickel sulfide, COS, cobalt sulfide, VS, vanadium sulfide, etc. AX2 structure. Here we will consider the structures of CdCl2, cadmium chloride, CaF2, calcium fluoride, Cu2O, copper oxide, and TiO2. CdCl2 structure. This crystal contains a cubic close packed structure of chloride ions. The smaller cations occupy only 50% of the octahedral sites. In the CdCl2 structure, Alternate planes corresponding to the octahedral voids are completely empty. Therefore, the structure consists of one CD layer sandwiched between two adjoining chloride layers. Because the next cation layer corresponding to the octahedral voids is missing, the two chloride layers will face each other. Since they are of the same type of ions, they repel each other and are held together only by weak van der Waals forces. The crystal can therefore be easily cleaved along this layer. Another consequence of this repulsion is distortion of the cubic symmetry resulting in rhombohedral symmetry. Many metal hydroxides of composition MOH2 adopt this layer type structure. So do the disulfides such as XRS2, SNS2, TIS2, etc. In metal hydroxides, the repulsion is between the OH layers. In sulfides, the repulsion between the S layers causes easy cleaving. Another consequence is the strong anisotropic thermal expansion. CDL2 structure. This structure consists of hexagonal close packed iodine ions in which 50% of octahedral voids are filled with CD2 plus ions. The octahedral voids in the lower half of the cell are completely empty. Therefore, this structure consists of I-CDI sandwich layers. Here again, the two iodine layers are facing one another. Hence, 
the ions are held together only by weak van der Waals forces. This results in similar properties, cleaving, etc., as in the case of CdCl2. Fluoride structure. This structure can be described in two alternate ways. In the first way, we can say that the Ca2 plus ions form a cubic close packed arrangement with all the eight tetrahedral voids in cubic cells being filled by fluoride ions. Since there are four calcium ions belonging to the unit cell of Ca is to F is 4 is to 8 or 1 is to 2 in the second way, the structure can be described in terms of a simple cubic lattice of fluoride ion with the cations occupying the cube center. Therefore, there are eight fluoride ions surrounding each Ca ion, while only four Ca ions surround a given F minus ion. The fluoride structure is adopted by AX2 compounds where Ra divided by Rx normally exceeds 0 0.73, although there are exceptions. For example, BAF2 1.01, .01, SRF2 0 0.84, BACL2 0 0.74 and THO2 0 0.73 are normal fluoride structures. Whereas HFO2 hydrofluoric oxide 0 0.56, ZRO2 0 0.56 and CEO2 0 0.67 are exceptional in possessing the fluoride structure. Cuprite structure. In cuprite structure, the oxygen ions are arranged in cube where all the tetrahedral voids are foiled by cations, that is CO plus. The ratio of cation to anion A is to X is 2 is to 1 and this is therefore considered as an example of A2X type structure. Other examples are Na2O, LIS2, Li2O, etc. Comparing this arrangement with that of CaF2, it is possible to understand that Cu plus ions form a simple cubic lattice in which the oxygen atoms are located at cubic centers. As a result of this, cuprite structure is called an anti-fluoride structure. Therefore, such a reversal of positions of anions and cations in the structure leads to an anti-structure or anti-type. This is a common feature encountered in many other crystal structures. TiO2 structure, rutile. This structure contains octahedrally coordinated cations, that is, Ti4 plus, titanium 4 plus ions, surrounded by 6 oxygen ions, surrounded by 3 titanium ions. Thus, it differs considerably from the NaCl structure. Therefore, the symmetry is changed to the tetragonal system. The octahedra share the corners in the A and B directions, wherein the C direction they share the edges. The metal ions in the C direction can have direct interaction giving rise to special physical properties in compounds which have the rutile structure. The rutile structure is adopted by AX2 compounds where Ra divided by Rx is in the range 0 0.41, 0 0.73. In TiO2 it is 0 0.49. A large number of solids are isostructural to rutile, for example, SNO2 stannous oxide, MNO2 manganese oxide, MgF2 magnesium fluoride, PbO2, etc. Conclusion Chemical bonds help us to understand the chemistry of the crystals. Ionic bonded crystals exhibit hardness and high melting point, but their electrical conductivity is low. Covalent bond produce definite geometrical configuration of the atoms. This results in rigid structure. Freely moving valence electrons in the metal results in high electrical conductivity in metallic bonds. Van der Waals bond 
produced mostly odd shaped molecules and crystals are characteristically soft and are of low melting temperatures. Unlike other chemical bonds, hydrogen bond is a intermolecular force which is helping in keeping the molecules together. Hydrogen bond helps to hold the two strands of the DNA molecules and also it helps in holding the molecules of proteins and nucleic acids together. The crystal structures of some crystalline solids can be understood by the principles of closed packing. They are called type structures because they serve as the basis from which more complex structures can be derived.